Good morning. Yeah, and it's not bright and sunny like it was yesterday morning. And in fact, the uh, sunrise that we had yesterday that looked like this, well, that same shot looked like this this morning. Yeah, that's the way she goes. Can't win them all. But you know what? It's still plus 4.1 outside. That means that the snow is slowly melting, not, not as fast as it was yesterday afternoon, but it, it won't be long and I'll be able to get my, it looks like I can almost get my driver's side door open on my car. Uh, now the other side of the car, there's actually a pretty good sized drift, so I gotta wait a while. <laughs> and, and right now, the uh, even though I can probably get my snow blower out, <laughs> Yeah, the snow blower doesn't work good in really hard snow, so it's it likes the light, fluffy stuff that you know that if you get it as soon as it falls, you're okay. If you wait until it starts to sort of turn to ice, snow blower won't work. Now somebody is probably thinking to themselves, why didn't you get out there and do it then when it was fluffy and you know the snow blower would work really good? Well, I may as well tell you, I was finding it a lot more harder than I thought I was gonna. Yeah, I mean, it, it was one thing to be running around in the backyard in September in my slippers practicing with a snowblower, and it's another thing to get out there like when it's minus 20 and slippery and cold, and uh, yeah, it, it just, it, it wasn't any fun. In fact, uh, it wasn't that I couldn't do it, it's just that I, well, I guess I just didn't feel like it. Uh, yeah, I, I found it harder than I thought. I don't know what I'm going to do next winter. <laughs> I guess I'll worry about it next winter. Anyway, about, uh, I'm guessing, uh, 12 hours has passed since we glued these up. Uh, maybe we should do our rollback and uh, see how we got to this place. And, uh, yeah, let's just roll back. Guess what I found? I found the difference between the 24 and the 25. And it is so subtle. I saw it when I was looking at the, at the video, uh, episode uh, 1121. Now apparently I wasn't the only one that noticed it. I got a lot of comments to the effect of telling me where it was. Yeah, thanks for noticing and commenting. And I'll, I'll put the macro lens on here and I'll show you. It, it's, it's so subtle, it's, it's real easy to miss. It's really got nothing to do with the size of the, of the shell. And there's just a very, very subtle difference. And I'll, I, you, you have to have, see, that, see it with the macro lens, otherwise you're not going to see it. Okay, the difference is at the very back of each turret. The 24 here has a bit of a camphor or chamfer. It's angled a little bit. Whereas the 25, it just comes straight up and then straight over. Okay, I've got everything uh, cleaned up here pretty good now. And uh, I think what I'll do is I'll put the two 24s together first and then right on the bottom of the uh, base 24. Yet on the other hand, why, why bother? Because I, I know now what to look for. You know, the, the 24s are the ones that are, are campered a little bit on the back. Um, anyway, uh, you'll notice that the, the bracket here, when these clams shell together, should mate up with with this bracket here and hold this thing in place. Now this is the first time I'm actually trying it. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dry fit of everything and just see how floppy the barrels are. Now what I want to do is when when I nip the sprue off the barrels, the uh, the uh, right there you you can you can see the little uh, where the, where the sprue was removed there, little white spot. So I'm going to want to make sure that I try and have that down. Um, I, 
Maybe I should be trying to use my fingers here. The reason I use my fi my tweezers so much re recently is because the uh, my fingers don't work so good. Okay, so so there's the little mark on that one, and here's the little mark on this one. So where are we here? I want to have this down and this down. Okay, <clears throat> and also the now mind you. Uh, this doesn't want to go in. Now what? That's odd. This this hole isn't isn't uh, opened up enough. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to drill that out. It just yeah. I wonder what have I put? Try to put it in the other way. Well. We'll think of something here. Let's, let's just try another one. Maybe this is the only one. Because I'm doing it on camera. No, this one doesn't want to go either. Is it, is it this thing? No, some of them need to be drilled out. Well, I guess I'm going to have to go ahead and do that. Get it done. Okay, we're back to where we were probably close to an hour ago now. Um, anyway, all right, so this is the, all right, this is the side here that you can just barely see the flashing. So we want that to be on the bottom. So that means that this one here is going to have to go into this one here. Now remember, we're just, we're just doing a dry fit here. And the idea is I want to see what elevation the barrels are naturally going to want to fall to. Okay, so they're going to... Well, that's not locking in place. That's not locking in place at all. Oh, sorry, I, I, I moved it out of, your, out of your vision there. Okay, that one was a little bit tight on the shaft. The barrel was a little tight on the shaft and maybe it wasn't... Uh... Okay, let's try it again. It could be that, that this part right here is not meshing up tight enough with that part there to keep it from falling out of place. Let's just try it again here. Well, it's better now. I must have done something wrong the first time. Okay, so <clears throat> when when the when the thing is on the ship, now I can see if it, you you'd want them like this, they might look good for you know if it was going to into battle. But <laughs> I think that if the thing was just cruising along, uh, looking for the Bismarck, because this is the Rodney, in all likelihood the the barrels would have been slightly slightly down of anything because in that way if any water or anything got into them it would want to drain out now I think they probably put covers over the uh, muzzles um, but I think that what I'm going to do is just let them let them uh, sort of hang down there I, I don't want them elevated um, well I suppose what I can do is uh, well, once everything's painted, I don't want to be messing around with uh, with extra thin, trying to glue the stuff in place. So I got to decide here. I think what I'm going to do is just just leave them sort of on a level elevation. That 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 looks fairly normal. That looks normal to me.
You know what? I sure hope that I didn't shoot this whole last scene out of focus. I got a terrible feeling that I, that I did. Well, yeah, I forgot to focus. I guess this is a case of where if I had it set to continuous autofocus instead of manual autofocus, it would have been better. Uh, but I didn't. Anyway, uh, what I did was I used the Revell Contacta to do the sides. That's what you sort of saw me starting to do there. And it, it was pretty blurry, but anyway. Um, and then later on, probably about five minutes later, I went around the front of each one with the, uh, with the, uh, Tamiya Extra Thin. And, uh, we're, we're just going to leave it overnight now. But, uh, a moment ago I looked at the thermometer and it's right now it is it is 6.1 Celsius outside and it's evening already usually by now it's starting to get cold and uh, the snow on my car is almost all gone yeah that big drift that was on the roof that that left about uh, oh three o'clock this afternoon it sort of slowly slid off like a like a glacier <laughs> And uh, there's, uh, looks like there's maybe just a, a little bit of snow on the hood where it all sort of slid forward. Uh, now, we say hood in, in Canada. Uh, Jason and some of you others, you, you'll say the bonnet. Anyway, <laughs> same thing, same part of the car. Uh, yeah, uh, sure good to see that snow going, I'll tell you. If we get a few more days like this, yeah, we'll actually be able to see maybe where the uh, carrot pad is in the backyard. But anyway, enough uh, trivia here. Uh, I'm just going to leave this now overnight. This Revell Contact, it does not dry real quick. It's not like the extra thin. Um, and we'll put the uh, the life rafts on. Now, I, I don't know, the life rafts, did we... Did we paint them first last time? I think we painted them first, didn't we? Yeah, when we did the when we did the hood, I think we painted the life rafts first, and then we stuck them on painted. So uh, you know we're at the place now where when we uh, when we get to the end of step six, uh, I think I better start thinking about painting. <sighs> what a depressing thought. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you in the morning. Well, it is morning. And uh, not much of it left. I've been busy. And uh, these little pieces, well, they're more than dry now. And uh, when I had the G spruce out, I should have nipped off the G22s. I thought we were I thought we were done with plastic parts, but I forgot that we got to put little probably antennas I guess that go in here, and we need six of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and get those. Okay, here it is, G22. Now it's just a tiny little thing here. I somehow was expecting something uh, bigger. I don't know why. And once again, I'm going to nip well back from the part. Give myself lots of sprue to hold on to here. You know, it almost looks like there is a... Yeah, there's a bit of a shape to it. I guess, I guess this end that I'm touching right now plugs into the turret. And this other end, I have to check the manual closely and see which way this is supposed to be facing, if you know what I mean. Now, I think it was this one right here. When I was nipping it off, I actually got a little bit too close to the, to the side of the post. And I think you can probably see I've sort of shaved off the side. Um... But I think there's enough left, you know, that, that it's going to be uh, 
strong enough that un unless I was to really, uh, you know, bang hard on it with something, which is almost anything. We we did something like this with the uh, on the hood, and if you remember, we ended up making wire antennas, except that because this has this little detail thing on the top, I believe this might be a periscope and not a, not an antenna. And uh, the, this this little protrusion coming out of the side of the top is actually uh, probably part of the optical. Just for fun, let's see if we can find a picture. Now, here we have a drawing from overhead, and it shows how these things are in relationship to each other. And they're kind of clumped close together, you might say. Um, they're on the stern section. Um, okay, here is these things that we just nipped off. And uh, there are better drawings that, sh that kind of show it. Um, at least it's it's uh, the the artist's impression of what he thinks they were looked like. Uh, I would like I've said before I prefer actual photographs. But uh, uh, anyway, let's let's uh, you know what I'll I'll uh, I'll put this picture up on the on the uh, on the screen uh, the way I've got it to the computer. It might be a little bit clearer. Uh, but we'll we'll page back. There there are others. Okay, I've got uh, four or five other drawings here in this book that that show this gun with the periscope. Now, none of them are what you would call really really clear. They're not. It's it's not about the periscope. It's about the gun as a whole. Um, yeah, you can sort of see the that it, that it is a periscope. It, it's not an antenna, and and this one here, you can see there's a the hose reel that we're working on. That's that's kind of interesting. Um, okay, you know what? I'm going to find these in the computer, and I'll just quickly put them up so that you can see them a little clearer. Okay, we've been talking about these all morning, and uh, maybe it's time to try and fit one in place here. You know what? I'm going to have to fasten this down. Yeah, I'm going to have to blue tack it onto something. Okay, so we are blue tacked down onto this tin. I was just looking in the monitor a moment ago and everything still looks terribly, terribly small. And I'm in about as close as I can get with this lens. Could be, it might be a good idea to put the macro lens on. Now, I want to have this, I want to have this facing forward. Now, for goodness sakes, Ron, don't let it ping off into oblivion. That's not too bad for a first try. Okay, let's let's put the macro lens on and see if we can put a tiny, tiny little bit of. Uh, is that going to fall into the hole? Yeah. No, it won't. It only goes down so far, and that's it. I guess the hole does not go all the way through. Okay, that's a bonus. Okay, let's get our macro lens on and try this again. Okay, I'm going to use a different pair of tweezers here. And I'm going to have to take it off camera while I realign everything.
Okay, that does appear to me that it's facing almost straight ahead, uh, uh, looking down the barrel, so to speak. And the only thing is, it's a it's a periscope, so in all likelihood, it, the direction it would would have been in would have probably been the, you know, the the last play, the last way that somebody used it. But I think that something like that's going to dry pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead now and do the remaining five, just like that. We've done this one on camera, and yeah. Well, we got them on, but I'm going to be shutting this video off. So thanks for watching everybody, and all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.